Over the course of human history, humans have done many death-defying stunts and have carefully articulated many dangerous adrenaline-fueled sports that take you to the edge of death and jolt you back to reality. People seek these sports just to feel reborn and have experiences of a lifetime, while some people do it just for the adrenaline rush. No matter how you see it, these sports have been here for eternity, and as lucrative as it may look, humans have challenged themselves to it time and time again. Again. One of these extreme sports includes base jumping, which is an activity that employs an initially packed parachute to jump from fixed objects. In today's video, we'll talk about the history of base jumping. How did it start? Usually, when one thinks of parachutes, they are thought of in relation to airplanes. However, parachutes have existed for a very long time, even before the first airplane flew. Small parachute-like apparatuses were employed by the Chinese gymnasts in the 11th century to prevent minor falls during performances. In order to provide occupants of tall stone towers in medieval Europe with the means of escaping fire, primitive parachutes were tested in the 16th century. The Montgolfier brothers started seriously testing parachutes at the same time they created the hot air balloon in 1783. Sebastian Lenormand also made a successful leap that year using a parachute with a 14-foot diameter. Soon, parachutes would no longer be composed of bulky fabric held open by by rigid framework, but rather would be foldable machines made of silk, and this opened the door for the base jumping era. Skydiving gave rise to base jumping. Base jumps often take place close to the item acting as a jump platform, and are performed from significantly lower altitudes than skydives. Because base jumps generally entail slower airspeeds than typical skydives due to limited altitude, a base jumper rarely achieves terminal velocity. Because higher airspeeds enable jumpers more aerodynamic control of their bodies, as well as more positive and quick parachute openings. The longer the delay, the better. Filmmaker Carl Bowenish, his wife Jean, Phil Smith, and Phil Mayfield came up with the abbreviation BASE. The genuine innovator of contemporary base jumping, Carl documented the first jumps conducted with ram air parachutes and the free-for-all tracking method in 1978. Although base jumps had been performed before, the El Capitan activity effectively gave rise to what is today known as base jumping. After 1978, the leaps from El Capitan that were captured on film were reversed repeated, but this time as genuine pastime rather than a publicity stunt or movie stunt. This helped base jumping become more well known among parachutists. Carl Bowenish published more base jumping related movies and periodicals up to his death in 1984 from a base jump off Troll Wall. By this point, the idea had spread among skydivers all over the world, and hundreds of people had taken part in fixed object jumps. Nearly all base jumps were performed in the early 1980s, utilizing regular sky diving gear, such as two parachutes, one main and one reserve, and deployment components. Later, specialized tools and methods were created specifically for the unique needs of base jumping. Base jumping is significantly more dangerous than similar sports such as skydiving from aircraft, and is currently regarded by many as a fringe sport or extreme stunt. People used modified skydiving equipment in the early days of base jumping, such as by removing the deployment bag and slider, storing the lines in a tail pocket, and installing a huge pilot chute. Modified skydiving equipment is then vulnerable to issues like line overs and damaged lines, which are uncommon in standard skydiving. The the largest difference in equipment is that although base jumpers can only carry one parachute, skydivers leap with both a main and a reserve parachute. The parachutes used for base jumping are bigger than those used for skydiving, and are normally flown with a wing loaded of about 3.4 kilograms per square meter. Base jumpers employ a harness and a container system with a single parachute. Since there is only a single parachute, base jumping containers are mechanically much simpler than skydiving containers. This simplicity contributes to the safety and reliability of base jumping gear by eliminating many malfunctions that can occur with more complicated skydiving equipment. When jumping from high mountains, base jumpers will often use special clothing to improve air control and flight characteristics while in the air. Wingsuit flying has become a popular form of base jumping in recent years that allows jumpers to glide over long horizontal distances. Those who have completed at least one jump from each of the four categories are given base numbers. Building 
fins, antennas, spans, and earth. On January 18, 1981, Phil Smith and Phil Mayfield made a tandem jump from a Houston tower to become the first people to earn the coveted base numbers. Base number one and number two, respectively, had already made jumps from antennas, spans, and earthen objects. Soon after, Gene and Carl Bowenish achieved base numbers three and four, respectively. When Mayfield successfully completed each category at night and was crowned night base number one, a separate award for night base jumping was quickly established. A few weeks later, Smith qualified. A jumper has the option to apply for a base number, which is given consecutively after making jumps from each of the four categories. In March 2005, the 1,000th applicant for a base number was submitted. Matt Harley Molinen of Grand Rapids, Michigan was given base number 1,000. Legal considerations for base jumpers include the right to utilize the item from which the jump is launched and the landing zone. Base jumps are frequently made covertly from antenna masts and towering structures. Many of these base jumps are attempted discreetly due to the common reluctance of the owners of these items to permit their object to be used as a platform. While base jumping itself is typically not prohibited, the clandestine nature of accessing objects frequently requires trespassing on an object, enabling events like the Go Fast games at the Royal Gorge Bridge conceivable. In addition to being prosecuted with trespassing, captured jumpers may also face charges of breaking and entering, reckless endangerment, vandalism, and other similar offenses. Charges may also be brought against the jumper's companions, such as ground personnel. It might be legal to use land in various areas unless clearly prohibited. One example of a man-made structure in the United States where base jumping is permitted year-round without a permit is Perrine Bridge in Twin Falls, Idaho. Since the early 1980s, accurate landings or free-for-all aerobatics have served as the judging standards for base competitions. The 452-meter high Petronas Tower in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia have hosted an official competition in recent years that has scored on landing precision. Modern base jumping, one of the first real extreme sports, is now a standalone activity with its own rules, competitions, and booming equipment and training industries. Today's base jumpers use equipment that has advanced parachute technology to an incredibly reliable state. Like any human endeavor, incidents do occasionally happen, but the majority of them can be attributed to user error. Base jumping has become an increasingly popular extreme sport, and in the lieu of its dangers, if we ask any base jumper that a reason for base jumping, the most common answer will be, it's just so much fun. Therefore, despite the fact that you might think you are witnessing the height of madness, what you are actually experiencing is the most recent iteration of humanity's long-standing and unending fantasy of flight. I hope this video added some value and knowledge to your thoughts. Do share your views in the comment section below, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so and hit that notification bell. See you in the next video.